diameter at the at the uh, foramen, how you keep sealer from going out the end when you're because I I, but, I get the cone, I butter the cone, and I kind of gently seat it in there. But I always get this squirt. Of, I mean, see the sealer out here? Oh yeah. I didn't need my readers. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Who's sending these back? Yeah, really. But I will put them on. Okay, so you got you got a lateral canal, didn't you? That's cool. I mean, the, did you see that? No. Well, that's a lateral canal. I mean, yeah, that's good. I mean, you you see it now, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes if it's coming. Like, like say they're, we're taking an a, a x-ray like this, if the lateral canal is coming at us or away from us in the primary it. beam, you won't see it. It'll just look like a, maybe like an extra white opacity. But when you see it bulging out like that, or if you move your cone, you might, if you moved your cone and came off axes, you might see like a linear rope, then the puff. Mm -hmm. Right now you're just seeing the puff. Anyway, back to your question. Just just talk me through this. So you shape the canal with your files, mm -hmm. you, and you're fitting a cone. Mm -hmm. And are you are you using any kind of condensation, or do you butter your cone and seed it? I butter my cone, seed it. I sear it off right here. Uh huh. I start plugging it down. Yeah. I sear it off a little bit deeper. Start. Oh, uh, so you're doing the classic yeah, technique, like, I, like like you did. Yeah, classic shoulder. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how are you introducing the sealer? Just on the cone? Yeah. Okay. So what sealer are you using? Uh, the uh, the Cybon or the uh, Kerr yeah, bulk canal sealer. The Kerr, but it's not the ED, e e extended working time. It's the other one, the regular one. Okay. Well, that that more or less is the same formulation, except it has a very fast setting time. Has that ever bothered you? It sets so fast. No. Well, then I wouldn't ask you to change. I'm trying trying to find out our, our differences so I can I'm nail wondering. down the variation. I'm wondering if. Uh, <clears throat> You know, like we talked earlier, maybe if my sealer is too thin, if it's being mixed too thin. It well, my observations here is it looks like you're using more than you need. Okay. And it might be too too thin, as you just said, and that could explain this. This could be explained by it's too loose or too much. So I don't know exactly which one, but but your shape is excellent. So I'm not thinking. You know, sometimes you can get more surplus when you're parallel. So if you're if you don't have a lot of deep shape, so like right up in you might have good shape here, but if your deep shape is more like this, that's when we get the overextensions, excess sealer and or gutta percha. So it looks like you have excellent taper. Your your mechanics is good. Uh, I'm not thinking this is gutta percha. I think your gutta percha is ending about right on the money. So that means to me you had good tug back. I'm going through this list. Did he have the shape? Did he have tug back? Did he get too close with his electric heat pluggers? Did he get too close with his uh, coal pluggers? I'm not thinking, you probably down packed about in here maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's perfect. I think it's just something that has to do with sealer. You're using all the shit I'm using. You're yeah. using Pro Taper, I believe. Yeah. And are you using Calamus? No. What are you using for I use your... System B and... Uh, That's no problem though. The other one, uh, what's the gun? Optura. Spartan Optura. Okay, so when you when you downpack though, you are taking pieces out incrementally. You're not you're not doing the, the classic you can where no. you sear off and you do a continuous plunge. No. You're doing my, interrupted. I, I got my gutta purchase sticking out here. I sear it off yep. at the at the uh, orifice. I start packing it. Pack. Heat. S pack, heat, pack, pack, heat, pack. Back, back, okay. Back okay, we're doing the same. So I'm just trying to find out all the little things because at some point we're the same, we're the same, we're the same. I'm looking for the difference. <laughs> I think it, I think, but I think it might be viscosity of the sealer um, and maybe too much on the cone because I, I put a fair amount of sealer on that cone. I don't need to. No, because when you're doing the technique you just described, I know you don't want to hear this for the third time, but I did my master thesis on it. You're see, when you when you soften gutta percha, it's mushing laterally, and it's moving a little bit vertically. I don't mean vertically this way, but I mean your heat wave. Your heat wave, heat vertically, and then when you pack, you can affect the gutta percha where it's thermo softened vertically and laterally. The interface is six, seven, eight microns. Okay. So when you start to think how many microns of steeler do you need to encapsulate the gutta percha, I mean it's like a bead. Like if I took a file, I don't put it in this way, but I used to, and go like this on my mixing pad, I'd have like a little bead of sealer on the end of my instrument. I'd carry this up the length, 
and I'd go in, out, in, out, just streak along the walls and come out and I might pick up a second bead and that's enough. Okay. Well, then I started buttering the cone because it was just a lot easier. And plus the file can make shavings and so I didn't want that. So I'm wondering okay, what, if, you're, if you should, we can mix some sealer uh, later in the afternoon and we can act, I can actually see how much you butter your cone. Okay. That's more visual, yeah. but I, I'm, you have too much, and so you either have too much or too runny.